Um, you know, every time they mention the founders of Fellowship of the Spirit, they'll, marry, they'll mention uh, Gary and Mickey and uh, Don Pritz. But I bet you Marie was also part of that mix. I mean, could they say behind every great man is a woman? <laughs> so anyhow, I, I love this woman. She, she's a powerhouse in Al-Anon and, uh, and, and, and just a lovely person, a very warm and affectionate and giving. Help me uh, welcome Marie. Well, hello, my name is Marie, and I'm a very, very grateful Al-Anon. And I'm really, really grateful for the program of AA and of Al-Anon. Um, it has saved my life. It has saved our family's life. Uh, it's just, it's amazing. And I was really excited, uh, actually, when I started thinking about what I was going to say. Um, uh, that um, I got to, I haven't spoken, I haven't told my story for a long time. And to be able to tell it uh, in this emotional sobriety meeting is really cool because, um, you know, so many things in the program, my program have, have been uh, centered around alcoholism. And uh, it sometimes that plays to my to my defect of uh, centering on on uh, the alcoholics in my life and not on myself um, and on my recovery. So uh, anyhow, this is uh, it, it's it's given me a lot to think about uh, in the context of what about my emotional sobriety. So. Uh, I guess I'll just, I'll give you some history, uh, hopefully kind of short so that uh, I can, I can keep the time for the, uh, the present time. Um, my father uh, and mother grew up in, in uh, West Virginia in the hills. They were very poor. They knew each other. And I think my dad said that he really liked my mom from the second grade on. And um, his, his mom uh, put the proposition forth that uh, he was gonna have to choose between God and science. And, and he, he, uh, he's a brilliant scientist. He was a brilliant scientist and he chose science. And so at 16 years old, uh, he uh, ran away from home and uh, to be able to do his own thing. And he ran from West Virginia to Indiana, ultimately. And uh, that's where I was born. And um, they were good people. Um, they had their problems. Uh, I had my, uh, the, the holes in my upbringing. I had uh, no religious or spiritual uh, teaching at all. Um, and, but as, as I look back on it, you know, it was really a clean slate that I, I came into the program with, with no, well, I did have prejudices against, uh, religion, but, um, I didn't know enough about God, spirituality or anything like that to, to really rebel a whole lot. So anyhow, um, I was born, uh, 75 years ago and, um, I was the, I had two brothers, a cousin and a sister older than me. I was the baby. And uh, my, my real um, goal was to remain as invisible as possible. And I did pretty well at that, except when I didn't. And then I was teased and, you know, you know the old stuff that kids do to their baby sister. So um, I, I, that, was, that was pretty much how I survived through grade school. Uh, I was trying to think of 
what did I enjoy doing? And I think I enjoyed sitting. It was about it. I enjoyed sitting. Um, we had a cabin in the woods that my father made and I sat. I sat in the swing. I just sat. So I was not, uh, I was not a very uh, active person. So uh, anyhow, uh, going to high school, um, I started socializing a little bit more, but um, I didn't date a whole lot because I think my middle name was Cold Fish and that didn't go over very well. And, uh, and invisible, I, I wanted to be invisible and I think I did pretty well at being invisible. So, um, but I was a good student and uh, when it came to go to college, um, I decided to go as far away as I had ever been, which was Denver, Colorado. So I went to DU and the dam broke, you know, I was loosened from the constraints of parents and, and uh, rules. And I, and I, and I, I put uh, a lot of um, value on finding the role that I was supposed to fit into and, and doing that. And so that's where I got uh, my, my uh, morality, I guess you would say. We didn't talk, in our family, we didn't talk about amends or defects of character or God or um, anything like that. It was, it was all very practical and very scientific. And I loved science, uh, but, you know, it was not terribly fulfilling. So I got to college and um, like I say, the, the dam broke and, and uh, I, I guess I wanted to experience the other side of life. And uh, like in the, the reading at the beginning of this meeting, you know, there was, there was a lot of um, need to have, have people give me my purpose, give me my, my worth, give me my, uh, being, uh, but I, I never took people terribly seriously. I, I, I was afraid of people and uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't fall into too many traps of, um, of um, worshiping the people around me. You know, they were just kind of, to me, they were kind of stupid. You know, and I, I so I was above them, and I was not a part of them, and so there was um, not a lot of um, not a lot of interaction except sex, drugs, and rock and roll. So that was my new modus operandi. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> He's trying to shield me from the glaring sun that's that's you know coming in. You're going to stand there? Sure. <laughs> okay. I want to hear what you have to say. Okay. And uh, you know it all, though. You know everything about me. So anyhow, um, so I just kind of went wild. And it was, it was really a, a reaction. It was the same thing that I was doing when I was um, isolating and, and uh, alone and, and quiet and and you know, in my room and, and, and without a whole lot of friends, it was the same thing. It was just on the opposite side of the coin. So here I was, you know, going kind of nuts uh, and just about as empty as I was before uh, I went, I came out to Denver. So um, towards the end of that, um, I had a really, really bad picker of the guys that I would hang out with. 
And um, I, I had this one particular guy who was uh, a total loser. And um, so we, <laughs> perfect, thank you. And so we went to, um, we went to a rock concert in Macon, Georgia. And um, in, in the, the time that I was in college, I was, I was trying, I, I did mescaline, I did pot, you know, I didn't like booze very much. I know that I wasn't uh, an alcoholic, especially when I was in high school, because one of my friends uh, would say, well, let's go get some booze and sit in the parking lot and drink. And I said, why? So to me, that's, that's looking back on it, you know, I, I didn't have that that uh, need to numb myself out, especially in in high school. But in in college, it was I was I was kind of uh, finding that trying to find that numb place, and and you know it, honestly, it didn't work very well. So um, went to Macon, Georgia. The, this was the the summer before um, I graduated from college, and. Um, I was um, I was wandering around by myself, and and somebody that I didn't know offered me some acid. So, you know, being as stupid as I was at the time, I just, I took it. You know, what the heck? And um, I went out into a field. It felt like it was about fifteen minutes, but I think it was about eight hours went out into a field and um, sat down and this huge hand came out of the sky and unzipped my head and washed it all out, zipped it all back and said, don't do this anymore. You don't have to do this anymore. And I took it seriously. I went back home uh, before my last semester, and uh, I was a, a, you know, a pretend hippie. I mean, I did all the things that that the hippies did, that the flower children did. You know, had long hair and smoked pot, and you know, dressed, you know, in in crazy clothes, and and um, went back home and I cut my hair off. And I stopped taking drugs, except for you know a couple of times. Years later, I I I never touched them again. And so I went back to school and uh, was was really bored. And so I I got a job, you know, very unhippy like, and I got a job. And uh, at that point. Uh, I met the completion of my personality, which was Mickey. And he, 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 was, um, he was exciting like I hadn't experienced. He was a drinker. I, I didn't typically go out with drinkers. Uh, I went out with potheads and you know people who were doing drugs and stuff, but not so much drinkers. And he was a talker, and I love that. Uh, I think it's, no, it's maybe. All right. Yeah, I think so. You look great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and so, and so we, we got along. I mean, it was like, it was like two parts of the puzzle fitting together. And um, it was, it was just kind of amazing. So within three months, um, we were engaged and married by New Year's Eve and with a muffin in the oven. But the thing that, that he reminds me about all the time, and I, I, you know, he holds it in the bank, is that he asked me to marry him the night before I found out I was pregnant. So that was a good thing. <laughs> um, so anyhow, we um, 
um, we got married and the description that, that really fits the transition that happened, because mind you, I was always in the, the role that I was, I was in. So I went from being a hippie to green polyester pantsuits. It's the best way to describe it. I was now the very uh, proper woman, wife, almost mother. So um, we had a real change come over us. Uh, well, I did anyway. Uh, his change was that he continued to grow uh, to uh, drink. And I had never really been around. My parents were not alcoholic. My brothers and sisters were not alcoholic. Um, I, I really uh, had never hung out with uh, alcoholics. I, I, I hung out with losers, but not alcoholics. And so I didn't quite know what the limit was. And so I accepted it. I just, I thought, okay. This is this is real life. This is what I've been missing. I've been missing real, real life. And so, you know, when he brought the the uh, custodian home from his gig that he was playing at, um, and they were both totally drunk, you know, I, I was like, okay. When he didn't come home until the morning after one of his gigs, I, I just I thought, well, okay, this is. This is what I need to expect. So um, we went on. It was, it was, I'm, I'm very grateful that um, ultimately I only was in the active alcoholism, uh, the drinking for three years. Because then it took us a long time to come to any kind of emotional sobriety within our marriage, within our lives. And around the time that, that he was, um, uh, that he had decided that, that he was really having a hard time with alcohol, I had gotten to know somebody and I was, I was babysitting her child um, and she was going to Al-Anon and she suggested, she, she said, you know, um, I was very, very lonely because it was, it was really just our daughter and me at home. And then, you know, Mickey was elsewhere all the time, either at work or, or drinking or, or uh, then, uh, eventually uh, to meetings all the time. And so she said, um, there's this great program where you can go and meet other women and other people that, that uh, they like to talk. They like to talk about things and it's uh, free. And we were poor, always, we were always poor. And I thought, that's really great. And she said, the only thing is, is that you need to have an alcoholic in your family or a close, close person. And I, thought, oh, I don't, my dad didn't drink, my mom didn't drink. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out who the heck I could grab as my, you know, uh, qualifying alcoholic. Uh, and I knew Mickey was crazy. So, you know, he and I had been talking about putting him in the nut house, but it, it never really uh, came down to um, alcohol being the problem. So when he um, called AA, apropos of nothing that I knew about, and he called AA and he told me that he called AA, I was like, yes, okay, I qualify for this program where I can go and be with people. And so that was, that was like really, really good news for me. Uh, but what I didn't know was that the program was about me and that it wasn't just sitting around talking 
and making friends, it was about transformation. It was about growth. It was about God. It was about amends. It was about all these things that I knew nothing, nothing about. Um, I was so uh, withdrawn into myself. I, I think it, it had to have been two years before I said a word in the meeting. Um, because it was, it, 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 I was, you know, we talk about fear being uh, as should be uh, classed with stealing. And uh, I, I believe that because it, it ruled my life. And, and even at one point, I, I told Mickey, as, as I was starting this program, I said, you know, I don't know about this thing that they talk about and they say fear and you know all this and I said I'm not afraid of anything because I would get my you know my steel up and 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 I said I'm not afraid of anything and and at that point Mickey had enough understanding of me and of the program he said you're afraid of everything and it was true I was afraid of everything uh, and, and my solution was to uh, go take our daughter and just be alone, you know, and not, and not interact at all. So, um, so my journey, the, the journey of emotional sobriety, I would love to say that I'm emotionally sober all the time. I'm not. My journey has been um, a long one. Um, we had a, a sex meeting the other night at one of my meetings. And so now it's, it's going to get a kind of you know, disjointed because there's so many aspects to what has gone on in my life in within the program. And I can't keep it on a timeline. Uh, it just, you know, it's, it's sections. Um, I was really, really ashamed of what I did during those college years um, because what I did was I used people for um, the, the need of getting any kind of value at all. And, and I can't say that I, I really cared about most of the people that I hung out with. Um, and and the, the uh, sexual part, you know, was, uh, like I said, I, I did not grow up with, uh, with a morality, including, uh, you know, you don't do that and you don't do that. Uh, my dad always said, do whatever feels good. You know, that was his philosophy. And but at the same time, you know, I knew that what I was doing was was wrong somehow, and I I couldn't put my finger on it. But I knew that that I I had to keep it secret, and and so when Mickey and I got married, um, I I felt the obligation to uh, keep that part of my life private so that he would continue to respect me. And what it did was build a wall between us. Now we had plenty of walls because although we were like jigsaw puzzles put together, we had very, very different experiences. And, and I, I don't know if it was different viewpoints because I really didn't have so much of a viewpoint, uh, except what was in front of me. Whoever, whoever was in front of me, I I agreed with them, and so that was my viewpoint. But <clears throat> um, 
I knew that somehow I was going to break our relationship if I ever let him knew, know who I really was or who I had been. And so 20 years into our marriage, um, my sponsor, or not my sponsor, because I didn't have a sponsor at the time, but the, uh, what I was hearing at the meetings was um, uh, there are three parts to the inventory and one of them is about your sex uh, life um, activity, you know, whatever. Um, and I, I heard that and I kept hearing it. And I finally, even though I didn't want to do it, and every time I did the steps, I, I would avoid that part. Because I knew that was like, uh, it was going to be bad stuff. Uh, but I finally heard it. And I, I thought, you know, I'm really, really having a hard time here. And Mickey would say many times to me, you know, there's a stranger here in our relationship. And I, I didn't quite know what that was but I kind of knew what that was. So, like I said, I didn't have a sponsor at the time. There were times when it, I was in between sponsorship and, and, and this particular time was probably a, a way too long, probably a couple of years. Um, and I knew that eventually I was gonna have to tell Mickey everything. Uh, I had gotten that far in, in knowing that, that the secrets that I was keeping from him had become a wall between us. And if we were ever gonna make it as, as a team, I was gonna have to tell him this stuff. I didn't know what you know to eliminate in, in the, the whole story, but I decided and I asked him, I said, can I fifth step with you, my, my sex inventory? And, uh, and I, don't, I don't recommend this to everybody. I don't think that that's necessarily the answer for everybody, but it definitely was the answer for us. And, and um, he didn't hate me. He didn't withdraw from me. We uh, ended up going on a five-year honeymoon after that because the walls were down. And having the walls down uh, is probably the best aphrodisiac you can get, you know, honesty between two people. And so the the shame that I felt um, was really, you know, there have been some things that have really been completely healed. Uh, that's one of them, the shame that I felt. Because I, I, I'm, I'm not the same person that I was. Um, I, had, I had a lot of brokenness coming into um, my, my younger years. I didn't even know I had brokenness. I was, I was, um, you know, I felt like I was living the moment. And the only thing that was telling me that I wasn't living the moment was that, you know, when you, you know that you're out of integrity, there's something wrong. And you know, you can feel you're out of integrity. You may not know how you're out of integrity, but um, I knew I was out of integrity. And so that has been one of the, the touchstones that Mickey and I have had through the years. And we've been married now 52 years. And um, we're very, very honest with each other about what's going on in our heads what what things are um, 
not just about each other, but about ourselves. And um, and those things, even even the things that you know, uh, there have been times when when he's had to come to me. Uh, and say, you know, I don't like you very much right now. Uh, I've had to come to him sometimes and say, I don't like you very much right now. And, and we talk, you know, it's like, um, the, one of the best things that any of my sponsors ever told me was that I need to treat Mickey like I would treat anybody in the program that I was maybe 12 stepping or, or just sharing my life with, um, minus the judgment, minus the control and management, you know, this is what you should do. This is how should, you should handle it. Um, and, um, and that's how you need to treat your husband. And, you know, it, that's, it, it's harder done than said because, you know, we have all of our history and all of the old um, arguments and all the old hurts that we carry forward when we try to talk to the other person. And, um, and then it, 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 it's, it's not quite as neutral as we want it to be, but, I think, uh, you know, sometimes people ask us, how do we, how have we survived 52 years uh, of marriage? And I think that's, that's one of the, the things is that we talk to each other and, and really listen and, and are not uh, critical of the other person's uh, battles and challenges. You know, typically we're not, you know, there are times when it happens, but um, so one of the things that, um, that I've been doing is that, uh, I, I, and some, um, I think about eight other people have formed a group and we, uh, it's about three years old now. And, and we've been doing core belief inventory together. And what's come up out of that is a lot of I imagine what you all talk about in this emotional sobriety meeting, which are the, the core beliefs, the, the, the lies that we depend on in our life to make decisions. Um, my first one that I did was that I was afraid of people. And so a lot of my decisions were based on uh, people were untrustworthy. So um, how do I maneuver that in my life? How do I uh, manage to incorporate the fact that people are unreliable? Uh, what do I do with that? And, and some of these core beliefs, we don't even question until we have to challenge them, you know? Um, uh, a lot of the, uh, well, there are just many, many core beliefs that people were dealing with, especially, uh, well, okay, one of mine was that um, if I, um, if I was too troublesome, the people around me would get rid of me. I felt that from the time I was a little girl, you know, you, if you stay really quiet and really invisible, they're not gonna get rid of you because they don't even know you're there. And so uh, it was one of the things that um, I really had to address because, um, gosh, uh, the number of decisions that I made based on that were outrageous. I mean, it was, you know, and and I, I just, I would do it without thought, you know, okay. Um, you know, you, you, you never, um, 
disagree or 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 uh, whatever with in, anybody. Um, so, you know, I've had to, and and as we looked at these things, you know, I was amazed that they had gotten past a lot of the other inventories that I've that I've done. Uh, because I would be focusing on individual resentments or, you know, and they might come up in the fear or dishonesty column and, and, and I would say, well, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want anybody to get annoyed with me and get rid of me, but I, I never, never dug into it. And so that's one of those things that I really have considered as being my, um, well, thank you. As being my uh, core belief lies that that have really destroyed my peace of mind, and and you know how many of us have defects that we say, well, they're really not hurting anybody else, you know. So I don't think much of myself. So I don't um, feel like. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, that God really cares for me or, you know, whatever, whatever comes up and I'm not really hurting anybody. And, and in my transformation, I have had to, I have had to find how that affects other people. And it really is surprising when you feel like you're invisible and you're doing stuff and you're saying, this doesn't hurt anybody except me, you know? Okay, so it hurts me, but, um, but how much do we hurt our children, first of all? Second of all, the, the union we have with our spouses, um, I know it just, it, it's torn Mickey up our whole marriage, the, the times that I, I dismiss myself and it just, it really hurts him. And I have to take that into account. I have to recognize it, you know? Um, I have to recognize how, how harmful it is to me, but also to the people around me. So, um, gosh, at uh, four o'clock this morning, I had a whole lot more <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna talk about. Okay, so I'm um, trying to think of some of those things. Uh, the the um, the fear that I've had um, of being a whole human being uh, has been huge. The nicest compliment that Mickey gives me is that he says, you are exactly who you are. And that, to me, that's like, that's so miraculous because I was always who, who other people wanted me to be or who the, the you know, we get role models, you know, uh, Dennis the Menace, um, all the, the shows that we used to watch, right? This is what a wife and a mother is supposed to be like. This is what a sister and a daughter is supposed to be like. This is, you know, and I had all these and they were my, my uh, models. And, and I, I never quite fit into them, you know? They were there and I tried to do it and, and in a lot of ways, maybe a lot of people thought that I was I was successfully doing that. Uh, but the truth is, is that I, they never quite fit. And um, <laughs> one Mother's Day, Mickey got me a uh, a drill for um, for Mother's Day, and the kids were just appalled. They were like you don't get your wife a drill for Mother's Day. And he said, that's who she is. And it's true. It's like, I have been able to be exactly who I am um, most of the time.
can't say all the time, but most of the time. I mean, I behave myself when, when we have company. I might not be as quite as um, silly. Uh, maybe I am. I don't know. But I have the freedom now that, and 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 to have that freedom comes with faith in God. And because you have you have God who is your I don't want to say employer, but that's in the big book, but it's but he's the he's the big guy, you know? And and I'm his daughter who he just loves. And you know, this is honestly this this journey into emotional sobriety is a very solitary journey. We do it together because we hold each other's hands and we hold each other up and 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 support each other and and encourage each other but the truth is is that it's a very solitary journey and i had a um i had a long time not trying to be mickey not trying to be my sponsor you know, I saw these people and I admired what they had. So if I could be like them, I'd be okay. And the truth is, is that I'm not them. I'm unique. I'm unique with within God's universe. And, and he's, he, he's encouraging me all the time to just relax and be me. And uh, and my fight in my emotional sobriety is continuing to believe that that's enough. You know, if, if, if I am taken out of, uh, as most of us have been, taken out of the uh, whirlwind of speaking and, you know, going around uh, and, and being at meetings uh, in person and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and and doing a lot of face to face, um, sometimes I feel uh, a little useless, and because it's changed. I mean, you know, it 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 was it was very very active at one point, uh, not so active right now. So that feeling of uselessness can come back. Uh, and, and the truth is, he, he knows exactly what jobs he wants me to do. And I had to be content with that, even if it's a very little job, you know. Um, I, can, I can be his daughter very quietly now, not as a, uh, not withdrawing and isolating and I can just be his daughter and do what he wants me to do today, just today, uh, without um, jumping up and down and saying, I have to be bigger and better and louder. And, you know, I mean, just this morning I was asking him to, you know, uh, are you sure you want me to be this quiet? And evidently he does, you know? So um, there's a lot of, I love sponsoring. Um, I have the privilege of sponsoring Gary and Julie's daughter. And she was in my Alateen group, 50, let me see. No, okay, I've been in 49 years and she was, I was two years, so 47 years ago, she was in my Alateen group and she was 16 and, uh, and we've gotten to travel this road all this time, which is totally a miracle and just a blessing, you know? And, and, uh, 
you know, like, you know, Zoom has made it possible so that I, I sponsor people in Hawaii and, and Indiana and, and uh, all over the place. And it's, as a, as a child, you know, even though I was isolated, I remember many times I would think, what do I want? What do I want? And, and this was coming from a, a child who just sat, you know, and, and didn't think much about, I didn't think anything about God. I didn't think anything about uh, transformation, emotional transformation. But I, I wanted to make contact with another person emotional contact well that's been that's been my journey is to be able to make emotional contact with other people and uh i suspect it's going to be my journey until i die because um there are parts of me that Mm, that's my little timer. Um, there are parts of me that want to withdraw again. I get real lazy and real tired. And uh, I've been fighting vertigo lately and uh, plantar fasciitis. And I can feel real sorry for myself. And the, the result of that is to say, well, I don't need to do anything then. You know, I can I can just sit back and 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 do nothing. And uh, part of that is God. Part of that is my defect of character. And um, I, I need to keep in touch with God so that I can tell which part is him and which part is me. And, and which part I need to be open to healing. So, um, well, if I remember all the rest of stuff that I was thinking about this morning at 4.30, um, I'll get back with you. But uh, for right now, <laughs> this is, I, I've talked for 45 minutes, I think. And um, so I, I don't know if, oh, Joel, you said I, I need to. Um, you could wind it up, when, wind down whenever you want. But at this point, if you are uh, ready, you could call other people, you know, that have, are attending in the Hollywood Squares, we call it. Well, does anybody want to raise their hand and, and I'll call on them? Because I don't know uh, who might want it. Let me see. Uh, let me, oh, there are two pages. Wow. This is your chance to put someone on the spot. <laughs> Ooh, goody. Okay. Well, I saw that Kate is here. She's not, her picture's not up, but Kate, would you share with us? Cause you know me kind of. Nope. Okay. Hi, Marie, sorry. Hi, Kate. Hi, yeah, let me just get my camera on. I was just finishing up some work stuff, so. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, but it's really good to see you and thank you so much for sharing I just love you so much oh, thanks. and um, you know when you share Marie I just hear an authenticity and a purity <laughs> and um, for me you're really a testament of those things that block us from the spirit if we take the time and do the work of this program that get removed so we get back to that pure essence that we all are. And that's what I see and that's what I hear, you know, when you share. Um, and so I'm just so grateful to be here and I just, I love who you are Thank and you're, you. you are more than enough exactly how you are. So oh, thanks. thank you for being my friend. Thank you, Kate. I love you too. Well, I have to call on Mickey. That's a rule, isn't it? Uh, 
Yeah, hi, I'm I'm uh, Marie's husband. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a uh, one of her pupils. <laughs> she has taught me so much and I have to put a plug in for Alanon. <clears throat> Alanon has saved us so many times. I just can't count it. But I want to give you an early one. I think I was about 6 months sober. And uh, I was obviously very insane. And so I came home from a meeting one day and I said to Marie, she was in the kitchen doing whatever. And I said, uh, Marie, uh, your housekeeping is endangering my sobriety and I'm going to have to leave. Now, Marie had six months <laughs> of Al Anon and she just lowered her, you know, the dish rag. And she said, I'm really sorry you have to go. <laughs> How's that for miracles? I mean, seriously. Proof that, of God. That that is is, of that's God. right in a nutshell <laughs> what's happened. And it's happened repeatedly. And uh, I'm so grateful. And, um, and, so I, and I also want to part, put this part in. Marie taught me that love and sex can travel together because when I was coming up, I was crazy as hell. And so this has brought that into our lives and there's a Jillian Moore and I just love you, sweetie. <laughs> I love you too. And you know, one of the things people, people ask us how we have stayed married for 52 years. And one of the things is to have a sense of humor, but also I have to say, a lot of forgiveness, you know? Um, Mickey's had to forgive me for a million things. Today, a couple things. And I've had to forgive him for many things. And and, and uh, uh, probably today, you know, a couple things today too, you know? But it's, it's uh, everything that I learned about being a wife, a, a, a partner, uh, I got from Al-Anon, but I also got, I mean, I've hung out with a lot of AAs and, and, and they are so passionate about their, their growth, sometimes much more than Al-Anon's because Al-Anon's don't seem to have the, the ax over their head, you know, you're going to die. And, and, you know, sometimes we take it a little casually. Okay. But, but uh, I get, I get the passion for this program and for God and for, for transformation from the AAs that I know. So, well, uh, I'll just call on Gary and Julie and then I'll open it up. How about that? We, we uh, are so much alike. And... <laughs> That's all I can, and oh, by the way, one of your sponsees just came out of a meeting and she's here on the, on the Zoom. Karen. Oh, good, yeah. good, yeah. But we've been married 63 years. Yeah. We lived with alcoholism five years, yeah. active alcoholism, five years. That was enough, that was more than enough. <laughs> I got tired of getting in the car, hitting on, putting on the brake, and then the beer cans would roll out, you know, that type of thing. But um, we had three kids in very short order. Uh, so uh, what I'm trying to establish through emotional sobriety is my contact with my higher power. Yeah. My, my last sponsor is in a nursing home, and she doesn't, she thinks she's like two. So I've been without a sponsor for a while. And um, Gary and I have, I, I think, a pretty good relationship when he does what I tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a nut. That's true. People said, you like to clean house. No, I don't like to clean house. I like a clean house. <laughs> And Kate, it is so good to see you. My gosh, it's been years and years. And we were going to try and come back 
uh, to Cheyenne and Denver this year um, because it's Gary's 60th or 65th high school, reunion. high school reunion, but we're just not able to do it anymore. We just can't get around like we used to. Yeah. And uh, we've had all kinds of wonderful offers, but uh, we're going to stay here in windy, rainy Indiana. Well, you know, you and Gary uh, were were role models for us um, because uh, I don't know if you remember, but so many of the people that we hung around with way back then were breaking up as couples. They were oh, yes. divorcing, and but you and Gary were were this solid um, rock to hold on to. So uh, you thank you for that. <laughs> what? You should have seen it from this end. <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing's perfect. <laughs> well, I met Gary so long ago, um, 50 to 49 years ago, and I asked him this crucial question. I said, do you do something if it's hard? And he said, yes. And I said, I don't do anything if it's hard. <laughs> I've carried that with me. <laughs> okay, I'm going to open it up. So anybody who has questions or has comments or just wants to share, please do. You can raise your hand in the little thingy down there or just start talking. Unmute and start talking. You raise your hands by going to the reaction button. Yeah. If people don't raise their hands, I know names. I guess everybody went to sleep. Okay, Kate Yamo. Hi. Thank you. Am I unmuted? Yes, I am. Um, Marie, thank you so much for your share. It was beautiful. Um, I My question is, you were talking about the core belief inventory group or that you have a group of people and you you talk about your core beliefs um and I you know I started thinking what are my core beliefs and then I I think it's what comes up in my fourth column in my inventory when I'm doing inventory work the core beliefs come Over. up like, like yeah. I'm not good enough or you know my 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 dad was a professor, my mom was brilliant, and my brother was brilliant, and I always felt like the dumb one. And I right. kind of carried that through my life uh, to a certain extent, but you know, it's gotten better with inventory work. But do, I was just curious, um, other than sharing about your core beliefs in the group, do you have ways to uh, improve or diminish them, or, you know, get rid of them or anything like that? It's, you know, it's like, it's like any other inventory, there's, it's, there is power in opening up the windows and the doors and saying, I'm basing these decisions on the fact that these people are more important than me, or I'm not important or whatever it is, whatever the core belief is. And and then we, you know, we go through the, the regular four columns, but also some additional questions. And, and we really talk about it in the sense of um, really burying our souls. And there is power in that. There's not ultimate power for, for uh, healing because that comes from God completely. But, um, but the beginning, it's just like the first step. You admit, you, you let in the fact that this is ruling your decisions. This lie, and if you call it a lie, um, you can't uncall it a lie very easily, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. Because, well, hi, Carrie, uh, because it really is a lie. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you if you keep consciously making a decision based on this lie, uh, you're going to feel that pinch. So that's the beginning. And then it goes to God. And 
over and over it goes to God and over and over it goes to God. And then, and, and we found, we, we had a review of some of the core beliefs we did and everybody was getting some, if not a great deal of healing from opening up all those windows and doors. So. Thank you. Yeah. Carrie, hello. To unmute. Hello, dear. Hello. Your face instead of just talking on the phone. I know. I just, I, I, I want everyone to know how much I have appreciated our relationship over the years and how much I have learned from you. And at the same time, we're walking through it together because we have so much in common. Our husbands are so similar. And we just, my, yeah, the folks are going to, um, you know, I have, I have been the beneficiary of, of your wisdom and your experience. And I just think everybody should know how fabulous you are. And I love you. And I will talk to you next Thursday. <laughs> thank you, Carrie. I, I called on you to get a, a, a little pat on the head. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. Okay, uh, somebody else had raised their hand. No, come on, somebody. Don't make me feel bad. Okay. I know names. Okay, Joel, it's you. 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 Yep. Yep. <laughs> you. You. Oh, open your mouth. I'm, and you're I'm supposed to just moderate, Marie. <laughs> I. I just love you. I love. I fell in love with Fellowship of the Spirit when I first went to. Uh, one of the conferences, and uh, it was in um, Queens, New York, St. John's yeah. University. Yeah. And um, what I fell in love with was that they had Al-Anon participation. I always felt very deeply that that was something that was missing from AA meetings. And when Fellowship of the Spirit always included, you know, that, uh, uh, that there'd be a, uh, on the panels or, a main speaker, an Al-Anon speaker. I just, I, I, I really think I, we owe that to you. I, I, I think maybe you'd want to talk about that a little bit about when it was first being developed to have the conference. Um, I, I have a sneaking suspicion that was your input, probably also Julie's input. Could you talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure. Um, you know, uh, I said this was a solitary journey, but it's um, without the, the companionship of people who are walking the same road, it's very, very lonely and, and we, don't, we don't learn much. And um, so we have, in Al-Anon, we have another side to this, to this uh, disease that is not exactly the same. It, it's very similar in many ways, enough so that we can really talk to each other. But it is different in some aspects. And, and I have not ever met an AA who, who doesn't have Al-Anon issues. And so when, uh, when we first were in uh, Gary and Julie's uh, um, trailer, I guess it was, yeah, it was in a trailer when we were there. Yeah. And we were talking about this, this conference. Um, it was about the fact that this is a family disease because everybody who is affected with alcoholism is going to affect something like six to seven people close to them, okay? Al-Anon should be six to seven times bigger than AA. It's not, but you know, there are a lot of crossovers, you know, a lot of uh, double winners, but, um, but it is a family disease. So that if, you know, Mickey and I have seen so many people who the, the one person is getting sober and the other person is just saying, okay, you go take care of yourself and uh, I'm gonna live my life and uh, you know, this is your problem, is very, very, very difficult for that alcoholic. 
to get sober and stay sober. Um, and, and it's not that the Al-Anon is the motivation for sobriety. I think at least in Mickey's in my instance, we could talk the same language. I understood what he was going through. He understood what I was going through. If I say I'm afraid, he's not gonna try to convince me not to be afraid. He, he understands and he listens. Um, that comes from the program. It doesn't come from, you know, a, a, a normal relationship. My, my, you know, if somebody is just standing on the outside of the program and not, not doing their own uh, emotional work, they might have a different reaction, you know, get over it or, or, uh, you know, you're so weak or, or whatever the reaction might be. But if we're talking the same language, we're able to really uh, support the other person in their growth. And I know Mickey has supported me in my growth. I remember one time, uh, I said, I am so mad at you. And he was like, that is so cool. He <laughs> said, you don't, you don't express yourself like that. You don't, you don't say that you're mad. And I'm so glad you're being honest. That comes from both of us doing this thing, you know? Um, and so, and so when we were talking about this conference, we were just really, uh, I, I think, you know, Gary and Julie are, are a family in the program and we're a family in the program and, and, and we know the benefits of, of the family being involved. So the Al-Anons were included because we're part of the family. And, and then plus, when I came in 49 years ago, there was very little Al-Anon literature. Mm -hmm. And so we used the big book. So that's what we had. That's how you get well, you know? And so we didn't have a lot of literature that would, that would say, you know, this is what you do. They've never come out with really great stuff, but uh, they have some good literature on, on describing the, the emotional things of, families of alcoholics, but they don't have much recovery. So, um, you know, we were having a big book conference. That's how I work my program. And that's how most of the people that I know and work with uh, recover in Al-Anon. So it was a natural fit that we all work together. And uh, uh, plus I'm probably kind of pushy. So, you know, whatever. I may have pushed my way in, into the the whole uh, setup, but I not really. I, I you know I, I it just was a natural uh, uh, consequence of the fact that we know that it's a family disease. We're we're committed to that. So thanks for the. I, question. I just have one more question. Um, early um, fellowship of the spirit conferences. We know Don Pritz was involved. Was his wife, Jackie, also involved? No, she was never involved in the program. She was one of those um, delightful people who didn't seem to suffer from the, the <laughs> insecurities and the fears and the angers and the resentments and the, you know, the upset that, that most al have. She just was a a dear sweet soul. So thank you, yeah. yeah, thank you for that feedback. I think Patty's got a hand up. Oh, okay, Patty. Thank you guys. Sorry, my Wi Fi is a little jumpy, but I really appreciate your share. I'm a grateful Al Anon member and I do attend this meeting quite often. I usually have my camera off because my Wi Fi, but yeah, I the whole honesty of your share. Um, I was a liar too, and I used a lot of people and um, I had a lot of shame of that, that I had to, you know, come to terms with in my, you know, step four and step five. And, and um, yeah, I mean, I was never like the person who um, 
you know, I wasn't the center of attention. I would just use people to kind of get what I wanted, you know, a lot of times. And I also get a lot out of the big book. I do this. I've done the steps through um, the big book, Al -Anon, um, Alcoholics Anonymous, and which is why I really love this meeting. And I, um, I just know that I go, I attend a lot of open A meetings and I get a lot out of the, um, the workshops because I just apply it to, you know, my disease, you know, my thinking disease. And I'm just really grateful and I'm glad I hopped on tonight and heard to share. Thanks for sharing tonight. Thanks, Patty. Appreciate it. Okay, we have 10 minutes to go. I'm pretty sure Sam's got some interesting questions to say. Sam Glenn, okay. What's up, guys? I'm Sam. I'm an alcoholic. Sam. And, um, you know, I think it's really, uh, really cool whenever we get the opportunity to get some insight into a relationship that's gone on this long, you know? Um, I mean, it's, there's not that many people who have experienced 40, 50 plus years of marriage and partnership and change, you know, and stayed on a parallel road. I mean, you know, it's just, um, and it seems to me that, um, you know, um, there are these, there are these, you know, surrender moments in relationships where you either just, you know, forgive and come to another level or it breaks apart, you know? Um, and it's, it's, it's interesting. I was, I was reading a, an author, um, uh, it was a book on marriage and the guy was talking about how most people like at seven or eight years of marriage experience this thing where they just want to just bust up. They want to quit. You know, everybody talks about the seven year itch, you know, and, um, but they get this overwhelming desire, you know, the sex has gotten lame. Maybe they're just bored with each other. They bicker a lot. They've grown apart, yada, yada. And then the interesting part was though, he said that people who stick through that year, like, um, report a, a greater happiness with each other and a greater intimacy, you know, and I always thought that was so interesting because in our culture, you know, like I've been married few times but you know in in our culture it's just you know if I'm not getting what I want and my needs aren't being met exactly as my expectations are um then we just bust up you know and I, I think it's it's beautiful to see people like um you and and um and Mickey and Gary and Julie because you know to and really to give people a look under the hood of what it looks like to have a long-term relationship with another person. You know, it's just, I mean, it's hard in any kind of partnership, especially in, uh, in, in an intimate partnership um, where you have to share everything, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, I mean, if you would talk, you know, a, a great way that I think would be cool to, to hear is have there been times in your sobriety journey where you guys have been like, God, I don't think I can do this anymore in your head or in your heart and then walked through it and come to the other side of it. Um, and I think you spoke to some of that, but you know, does that come up for you? Absolutely. In fact, we, we split up for a whole six weeks one time. Um, <laughs> and and uh, uh, we said, it's going to be six months. We're going to, we're going to take a break for six months and we lasted six weeks. But what was happening in that was that, that, you know, we were pointing at the other guy and saying, you know, you are, you are not this, you're not open enough, you're not kind enough, you're not whatever. And uh, we had to come to a place where the finger pointed back at us and, and, um, we had good sponsorship and that was, that was really, really helpful. We had good sponsorship and, and we didn't stop examining our own motives and, and that. Um, we had gotten far enough in, I can't remember how long we had been in the program. Do you remember Mickey, when we split up? Anyway, we did and, and um, we were stronger after that. 
And we've gone through some really, really tearing mm -hmm. situations of um, being attracted outside of the, the marriage and, 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 and being uh, seeing other possibilities. And honestly, I think, I think it was, it was God. It was, it was uh, the grace of God. We, um, I was lucky enough to, I, I, you know, I was not raised in any religion and I, and, and uh, I was lucky enough to come into uh, my faith in my church and and so Mickey and I did a lot of praying together, and 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 I think that that the union of two people trying to seek God, we don't like each other sometimes. Okay, we just because we're hard headed, and you know, and and we have our opinions, and 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 we're not we don't give in very easily. And, and so, but if, if God is at the center of the thing, then, then you have a, a, you have more than your own opinion, you know, marriage is hard. And I don't, I don't say that our marriage is like, you know, rainbows and butterflies all the time. Sometimes it is, but it's not like that all the time. And, and so when we get to that point, it really is the three of us, God, Mickey, and me. And, and that's how we get through it. And, and so, um, I don't know, do you have anything to add to that, Mickey? I mean, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I thank you. I, my mom had a, whatever you call it, you know, you stitch something up and you hang it on the wall. And and it said a good marriage is a is a um, union combination of two good forgivers, and that's the deal. It's like yeah, it can get hot and it can get, but you know what? Uh, you've got this person that years ago you stood before God and said, "I will marry you for the rest of our lives," and I carry that in my pocket. But in any event. That forgiveness, even sometimes it's hard, and having a sponsor that you can talk with about it really helps. And, and I would also say that the more that I did inventory and, and looked into my own motives and my own defects, everything that I would blame Mickey for, I had in some way or fashion. Maybe it looked a little different, but you know, if I was saying he was being hard-headed, I would see where I was being hard-headed. And if, if I was accusing him in my head and heart for being uh, mean, I had my places where I was mean. So the more I understood my own defects, the more I was able to forgive him for his because, you know, it's kind of two-sided if, you know, if I'm saying, well, it's okay for me, but not for him, you know. That doesn't work. So, uh, are you going, Julie? Yes. Okay. Bye. Bye. Love, Love you. Love you. Um. So, um. I well, I guess it's it's time, Joel. Unless somebody else has something else they want to say, real quickly. No, it's it. It is that time. I was helping from another comment from our other couple that has uh, weathered the storm for 60 something years, would say something uh, to Who Sam, 63. <laughs> wow. Oh, Julie and Dave. Any comments to the success? Oh, I mean, the secrets of success? What, Julie? Say it again. She said it's all, it was all butterflies and roses. <laughs> oh, but, is it true they say never go to bed angry? No. <laughs> it's an ideal. It's an ideal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've gone to get to bed really pissed. But somehow <laughs> in the middle of the night, 
God just, he does his surgery on me when I'm asleep, you know, and I wake up and I can hardly remember what the heck I was angry about. So uh, yeah, it's an ideal. That's great, but we don't do it. Do you think okay. it was as necessary? Uh, do you think you could have grown in the same way that you have as a person, not having been married as long as you oh, have? Oh, no, no. I, you know, I, I have been thanking Mickey lately for, for being the, the conduit for, for my transformation. I, I sometimes look back and I, I kind of say, okay, I was on that path. What would have happened? I was on that other path. This guy asked me to marry him. What if I had married him? It's all horrible. I am blessed beyond belief to have someone who is seeking God all the time and who loves God and who loves me, but loves God more. And people will ask us, you know, they'll say, uh, what's the secret to your long marriage? And I, my answer is this, and I mean it. You put your uh, mate number one. Mm. Yeah. The job can't come before it. You the know, kids can't come before kids it. Kids can't come before it. You know, and we read an article long time ago to remember that our marriage is between us. We have children, we have grandchildren, but we married each other, that's our marriage. So, you know, this priority is before God and he really honors it. And I've got a nice person to be married to. <laughs> so do I. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, that's you. <laughs> okay. The way we close out this meeting is we Thank go you. into our uh, inner room and we say a prayer or we meditate and reflect on what was shared today.